So Mary, could you tell me the story of how you became Catholic? I had a very devout Anglican mother. Learning about the church came because she wanted to have instruction. And she said, would I go down with her to have instruction? I was um, 16 when I became a Catholic. I, I, I don't think I've got words for it. It fitted what I was needing. When I was um, already a, 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 a serious ballet student, if you like, and six of us had been taken out of a school to tour with the opera. It happened several Sundays before I started getting curious as to why this group they came running down the platform. You know, who were they and why were they always late for the train? You know, could they do what other people did? Um, but in fact, of course, they probably had a job finding a church, you know, with a mass early enough. You know, they'd probably gone to mass at 6.30 or something. And I just thought that was so impressive. It's the music that draws me to dance. It's sort of like trying to be a, an acrobat, but to music. I think that's the hardest thing in the world. It wouldn't have crossed my mind not to, not to offer what I was doing. Um, could you tell us the story behind the photo of you that is in the National Portrait Gallery? So that photograph you're talking about was because Norman Parkinson found out that we, that the ballet, were going to be in New York. And so Norman, with his camera and everything like that, and his assistants was there, but everything else was dark. Quite strange, but I think he was pleased with the photograph. Why it should be in the National Gallery, I don't know. I was wondering if you could tell us anything about the story of your marriage. We had an engagement which was 98% apart, I suppose. He had a heart condition which wasn't diagnosed. The doctors weren't that brilliant. He had five heart attacks in 16 days and he died of the last one, but it wasn't anything like the worst. I had all the thoughts of joining him very quickly that go through the minds of people in that situation. I wouldn't have uh, probably survived without my faith. No, I, I mean, I was well into my second marriage. We've got three girls and a boy in the second group. Um, so we've, we've got eight, yes. But the boy has Down syndrome. I was teaching at that point, yes. And my youngest child had gone to day school, so I was able to do that. My father went to a party somewhere and met um, a priest that he took a great liking to. And my father came back and said, I met somebody you'd, you'd like, you know. I wouldn't have known what the word was, but I suppose he was a bit of a spiritual guide. He gave me books to read. And I think that was incredibly helpful coming at that moment when I was already professional, but I had these long bus journeys to do. I was fortunate in just so many ways like that. I think it's, it's desperately important, Opus Day in Britain. I mean, it's pr providing guidance and help for the entire sort of fa family life, the Christian family. That this is something I've been looking for and now I've, I've found it. It, w it was, was here all the time. I didn't know it was called Opus Day. Yeah.